beautiful Scorpio, welcome to your tarot reading for whenever you find it. Timing is divine, so this reading is timeless, but the energy that I'm working in is October 2024. So I'm going to do a life path reading for you, Scorpio, with the Star Tarot, and I'll get clarifiers from the Santa Muerta deck, and then I'll get an oracle card from the Halloween oracle, and then I will pull some runes at the end. So Spirit, what is the energy that Scorpio is wearing at this time? This reading will be for a month out, okay? So from now to a month from now. Thank you, Spirit. Okay, Scorpio, you have two cards for the energy that you're wearing. I'm only reading uprights. I'll understand when it's, you know, when the meaning is supposed to be reversed. So you have Ace of Cups and the Lovers, Scorpio. So I don't do love readings, but geez, oh, Pete, that's, that's a lot of love right there. <laughs> okay. All right, Spirit, what is Scorpio's path moving forward? Thank you. Show me Scorpio's path. Thank you, Spirit. All right, you have Knight of Swords. This is really, really destined. This is timing is divine energy. This is representative of a Yad, the finger of God, an astrological aspect that says now is the time. Nine of Swords. This is a kind of a difficult situation mentally, emotionally. This is a feeling of dread re or regret. Um, you know, living in the past or the future for some of us. It's really the need to be present. And then the King of Wands. Beautiful. This is authority in your life. You know, strength in your life. Um, being the master of your destiny. And your path leads to the Queen of Pentacles. Let's see. Okay. Wow. Judgment. I will get clarifiers for these, but this is just real interesting here. Prince of Wands and your advice card. The High Priestess. Beautiful. So, so Scorpio family. The energy you're wearing right now, there, there's, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of heightened emotion. A lot of you might be falling in love or, you know, have that really new kind of um, in love feeling, butterflies in the tummy kind of feeling. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about a person either. This can be excited about a new chapter in your life. Um, really, really into um, something that you see as a blessing. And emotions just pouring over. You know, you have the Ace of Cup here and you have the Ace of Cup here with, with the water just pouring over. You know, really, really heavy emotional time. And look at this. You have the the light, this is blessed light sh shining down from this angel and this dove of peace. And you have the same light shining here. Like this is a very, very blessed time for you beautiful Scorpios. And I'm, I'm certain that you're feeling it. If you're not feeling it, then, you know, we'll talk about that as we go through. But if this isn't love, you know, this could definitely be a choice that you're making. Um, with the Ace of Cups, this is moving in the direction of something that you love, something that you care about, something that you are um, that really speaks to your soul that maybe other people wouldn't understand. Adam didn't understand it when he chose to eat the the, the, the apple, right? Or or you know, or when Eve Eve chose to eat the apple. Okay, let me let me let me let me restate that. People didn't understand it when Adam and Eve chose to eat the apple, but they ate the apple because they wanted something for themselves that other people didn't want for them. Yeah. So it's following your authentic truth in spite of what other people might think about it. You know, and and like in the story of the Garden of Eden, you in some way could find yourself expelled from um, a situation because of it. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. You could literally get kicked out of your house. You could get kicked out of a relationship, kicked out of a community, excommunicated from a family, something like that. Now, this you clearly don't care because you're following your heart, you know, but this is kind of that energy for some of you beautiful Scorpios where literally you're following your heart to the point where I can no longer follow this path that's not my authentic truth in spite of what other people may want for me. Okay, again, take it as it resonates, but that is a pretty clear message for me. Now, the Knight of Swords and the Nine of Swords and the King of Wands, this is your path for the, for the month ahead. Now, this is divine timing and 
you know, this is kind of a comforting message with the Knight of Swords that this is a Yod, this is a finger of God. And you kind of see a very, very similar structure in the spider web behind her. So that's a reminder that this is meant to be happening, right? And you have the promise of the butterfly there. The butterfly is you're being changed because of this situation. And then you have the King of Wands, you know, what you're being changed into. In some way, you are becoming even more the master of your own destiny, right? But the Knight of Swords is a message, a messenger, um, or an energy that comes into your life, right? And it can come in swiftly that causes you to lose perspective, causes you to look back into the past or forward into the future, not be present, so that you're uh, processing emotions on a very, very heavy, heavy level, right? You're clearly this isn't a happy moment, but it's there's no threat here. You are just um, kind of, it's it's like a nightmare kind of energy. You wake up in the middle of the night because, you know, something is troubling you. Or it's hard to fall asleep because you have so much on your mind. You wake up early because, you know, you, you wake up because you're hot, but immediately you start thinking about, oh, what if this, what should I do about that? Oh, I didn't do that. Why would they do this? How could they do that? You know, just so much, so much mental energy that haunts you. And that's what the Nine of Swords is. So this is a really heavy duty kind of processing that you have to do. Now, for some of you, this could lead to um, rage and, you know, kind of anger because the King of Wands is a real heightened fire energy. You know, that's only going to be a message for some of you. For a lot of others, this is going to lead to you stepping into your full power. For all of you, really, ultimately, that's what you're doing. You're stepping into your full, full power, you know, but again, there's a lot of fire in the King of Wands, right? So this is, you know, um, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore for some of you or um, don't tread on me for others, you know, and for all of us, it's just going to be like, um, I am taking my life back on, in, in some way. You know, I see there a bit of a struggle here, a bit of a push and pull energy going on for you beautiful Scorpios. So let's get some clarifiers after we do this next line. <laughs> so your path leads to the Queen of Pentacles with the judgment, with the Prince of Wands. Super creative energy, right? You are creating, my friends. Queen of Pentacles is the creator of the material world, creator of material manifestation. The Prince of Wands is a magical creator. He's using his magic wand to create something. Again, following his bliss because it's topped with a sunflower, which always follows the sun. When the sun rises, it looks and it follows the sun all the way to sunset. And it just means... Um, he's following what makes him happy and he's being brave to do it. He's got the lion here, right? And the king here of, of wands is astride with lions. That lion energy is brave, courageous energy. I don't care what other people think at this point. I don't care if uh, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm not going to be afraid of what people think about me kind of thing. Um, but, you know, he's creating a beautiful world. He's got butterflies and flowers and sparkles and stars and this beautiful rainbow. He's painting his world the way he wants his world to be, right? So, and with the unicorn, you know, he's he's making, he, there's something different. There's something special here, something rare. I, and I always get that with the lover's card too. There's something different and rare and special that you are embracing for your life. And the Queen of Pentacles is that beautiful creatrix energy that um, births the world around her. She's like the Empress. You know, she she gives birth to a beautiful world. And with the Queen of Pentacles, this often comes out of a long time and a lot of pressure. The Queen of Pentacles has gained wisdom, patience, learned how to find love, learned the hard way how to... How to um, how to express ease out into the world by being um, by being in situations that weren't easy. You know, it's like really stepping into your own. You know, I feel like the King of Wands leading to the Queen of Pentacles is, you know, 
leadership and stepping into your own as far as what you want to create you know just absolutely stunningly beautiful creations come from from the queen of pentacles and the judgment this is again this is destiny you have the judgment right under the, the knight of swords very very destined energy everything that you're going through right now was preordained pre-written um and Gosh, this is very similar to what I got for beautiful Libra. So if you have Libra in your chart, I would check their reading out as well. But I just feel like, especially if your birthday is close, um, early Scorpio, you know, um, then it's close enough to, to Libra's astrology where, you know, this really could resonate with both of you. But I just feel like you feel like that song right now, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I mean, it is... I've never gotten that with this card before, but it's really strong right now in the back of my mind um, that there is like this really, really beautiful, special thing that you're stepping into. And you have to really step up to move into this new energy, um, which is great that you have the King of Wands. It's going to take courage, again, to step up into that, right? So just creating big time. And the High Priestess, this is your advice card. Um, and we'll get a clarifier for this, but this is just stay connected. And again, so, so resonant with the Libra and um, message, stay connected to your gods, guides and guards. Uh, take the time to listen to spirit, you know, pull that Oracle card each morning or do your meditations or say your prayers, count your blessings, walk in nature, whatever it is that you do, whatever practice that you have. And if you don't have one, it's a great time to start one with the high priestess. It's saying that if you do stay connected, and she's so connected, look at the spider web. She's the, That spider web is Indra's web. It is the thing that connects every true thing, every real thing in the universe, right? So you're part of that. And you're sensing, a spider can sense everything that's going on, no matter how far away, because it touches a part of its web. And he'll know from the vibe, or she'll know from the vibe on the web, where that thing was right so by staying connected to spirit you will be um, empowered on your creative journey and i really feel like this is kind of the beginning of that energy that nine of swords energy here that kind of worrying that really difficult kind of painful emotional processing that you have to do that mental processing that that, that you have to do whatever is causing you to lose sleep you know, working through that is going to position you to be so much more connected, so much more empowered to be a co-creator with spirit. So there's a reason for it, you know. All right, spirit, let's get some clarifiers for the Scorpio family. Show us who Scorpio. Oh, there we are. Scorpio. All right. So the lovers and the ace of cups is clarified with the five of cups. The knight of swords clarified with the two of wands, the nine of swords clarified with Santa Muerte, the death card, which is change and transformation. The king of wands clarified with the three of cups. Queen of pentacles clarified with the star. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love it. Judgment clarified with the four of pentacles. Prince of Wands is clarified with the Knight of Wands. That's powerful. And the High Priestess, your advice card, is clarified with the Eight of Pentacles. All right. So that Five of Cups, you know, the Five of Cups is that kind of the Nine of Swords kind of energy, but a little bit more emotion or a little bit more leaning into the emotions, right? There could be some grieving going on. There could be some that emotional processing going on and really a need to stay balanced here. You have like a labyrinth on your head. And it's like, to me, this is one of those games where you drop a marble in and you try to tilt it so that you can get the marble to follow the labyrinth to go to a point that you want it to end up at, right? That's going to take a minute and it's not easy and it takes a lot of focus and a lot of trial and error and really trying to keep your head steady, you know, really, oh, oh, it went back and that's all right. You can't get upset. It went back. Now I have to slowly, you know, move it back, right? So it's really, really 
in your feels, but in a way where you're navigating your emotions so that you can go through this healing process. Like there's really a healing process happening here for you beautiful Scorpios while you are creating your future, <laughs> okay? So uh, it looks like you have to, like something needs to be healed before you're ready to, you know, and I really got that with the Nine of Swords too, before you're ready to manage a new life. And then that Knight of Swords with the Two of Wands, the Two of Wands is a portal, it's just a portal. Easy as that. You know, it opens a door. When one door closes, another door opens. That's the two of wands. And it's it's like spirit saying, you can now pass between these two sphinxes. You've passed the riddle or you, you know, you've figured out the riddle. You're given permission to pass or the Yad, the finger of God, divine timing says, bam, it's time and pulls the trigger, you know. So um, the two of wands said that says that um, the way has been made clear for you to move forward on your path. And the Nine of Swords clarified with the death card, the Santa Morte, shows this change, this, this, this major, major shift in perspective that you are undergoing by doing whatever shadow work this is, this Nine of Swords. Inquiry, shadow work, um, maybe therapy or counseling for, for some of you, um, just some way that you are facing your fears, facing, you know, facing your fears, especially with the death card here, right? Facing your feelings, facing your guilt, you know, a lot of us guilt can be the real thing that holds us back, you know? Um, so the cool thing is though, once you do do that, you will be changed with the death card and you will be able to then give birth to your future. You know, she's pregnant again with possibilities, just like the Empress, just like the queen of pentacles, right? She wants to birth her future. Um, but she has to, she has to allow herself to change into a mother before she can be a mother. You know, and I just feel like whatever it is that you're becoming, you have to allow yourself to change into that before you can step into that role. The white butterfly, that change. Right. And then the king of wands clarified with the three of cups. Three of cups is, again, it's divine timing. It's destiny. Usually it's three women with their cups tilted up to the sky, dancing around. Those are the fates of destiny. Those are the norns at the tree of Yggdrasil, you know, carving the runes in for all of us mortals and, and, and determining what our lives will be, right? So the three of cups always speaks to me of destiny and divine timing. But here, this is a celebratory card. And the three of cups does speak about celebration and happiness and the king of wands, you know, this busting through energy, this bossing up energy. You know, a lot of you will step into boss role and you will be um, ce ce celebrating yourself. You know, you will allow yourself to be patted on the back and, you know, whatever this boss role is, it doesn't have to be with a career or a business. It can, but in some way, in some area of your life, you're going to feel, you're going to understand and see and feel um, that you have ascended, you've leveled up, you've graduated. And I love it. The Queen of Pentacles, clarified with the star card, is so beautiful. Again, she's really processing her feelings. She's halfway in the water, and here you're halfway in the water. You know, this is a very emotional time. And by being connected to your emotions, your emotional guidance system will tell you which way to go. It'll tell you what to do. It's the best way to co-create with spirit is listening to your emotions. And I really get that with that labyrinth feeling, listening and navigating your emotions, right? And the queen is creative. So it's co-creating with spirit. You know, it's just really, really staying tuned in, tapped in, tuned in, turned on to co-create with spirit. And both of them have that creative star over their head, right? That star of guidance and manifestation. So beautiful. And also for some of you, you know, there is like a level of stardom. There is getting eyes on you. The King of Wands is, a, is, is an influencer. The King of Wands is, a, is an influencer. You know, he creates um, videos and writes books and, you know, puts out blogs and posts 
memes or whatever, you know, he puts out a lot of information. He's not like prolific, like the King of Swords, but nevertheless, he's extremely attractive and charismatic. And when I say attractive, it doesn't have to be physically attractive. It means um, people give him audience, people look, people listen, um, and also attractive, meaning like the law of attraction, what he puts out there, the universe listens, you know, so you are, are, are increasing your attraction, which is awesome, right? And then you have the star card with the queen of pentacles. You are increasing your charisma, your audience, your influence, right? And attracting uh, physical wealth, maybe abundance, manifestation, growing something, the Queen of Pentacles is really big growth, right? It's a growth spurt. And the star, eyes on you, standing on a stage, you know, people people listening, people watching, that kind of thing too. So that's really, really good. And then judgment with the Four of Pentacles. You know, here, what I see here and what the card means to me here, and so Spirit knows to give me this card when I need this feeling. She's playing in a... a, a a dollhouse. She's planning her future. You know, she's rearranging the dolls and she's thinking about what she wants her future to be like, right? And she's setting it all up for herself. So she's imagining it. She's stepping into what she wants. She's imagining her perfect husband. She's imagining her perfect wedding. She's imagining what her family will look like, what her children will do. You know, uh, having a house in the country with a white picket fence, whatever it is that she wants for her. She's pretending. And that's how we co-create with spirit. We let spirit know what we want. And then spirit moves, moves the cosmos, rearranges the cosmos if it is in um, alignment with the divine will and with the all. Spirit helps us to make it be so, right? So I just feel like you are stepping into right? Stepping into, like, she can't become a mother until she changes into a mother, right? She can't have that baby until she changes into a mother. So here you are changing into whatever it is that you're creating. You know, you're giving your uh, spirit your order at the restaurant, per se. And the Prince of Wands with the Knight of Wands, wow, this is empowered energy. So here the Prince of Wands is creating his world, right? And here the Knight of Wands is marching forward, making it so. Like the Knight of Wands is in motion and he brings things together. He actually does a lot of work too. He's a real workhorse. And so I feel like you're going to be working. And you know what is so interesting? You have the Eight of Pentacles after and the Eight of Pentacles is a lot of work. And that's in your advice card. Time to get to work, time to make things happen, time to work on what it is that you want to build, what it is that you want to create, what you think is beautiful and and you know, and, and reflects your truest self. Time to get um, your nose to the grindstone and, you know, and, and, and hit the pavement kind of thing. And your advice is to do just that with the Eight of Pentacles, but also stay connected. You know, I really see this, this crown of roses on her beautiful head here. Um, very, very similar to, to, to the spider web kind of energy around her head. And I just feel like it's that connectedness to spirit that's going to help you to be so um, prolific with your co-creation because the Eight of Pentacles is prolific co-creation. You know, the Eight of Pentacles is making, uh, pop, pop, pounding out one coin after another until you refined the process. You're really super good at it. You know, you're making coins better than anybody else, basically, right? So it's, you know, if it's making videos, it's making one video after another video after another video and really, really doing a lot of work so that you can become a great video maker, right? Or, you know, writing, you know, it's only practice makes perfect. So I feel like there's a lot of refinement here. Yeah, but a lot of work as well. And not just wasting work, not spinning your tires, but really making tracks, really moving forward with, you know, I feel like because of the shift, because of the changes that you've gone through, now you're you're ready in pulling that trigger to really catapult yourself forward into your future in a way that is going to make um, all the difference I'm getting. 
All right, so your oracle cards, again, you got two. You're the only one who got two um, self-representing cards and two oracle cards. Very interesting. Joy, rejoicing in the present. So, you know, experience what you're experiencing. And this is where you're going to get the fuel for your co-creation because our emotions are the secret to our creative ability. So, you know, feel, and I get that with the Ace of Cups. You know, you have... Um, you have, hopefully you're experiencing joy. You know, I do see some, some shadow work happening here, but you know, keep, keep your mind open, your eyes open, your arms open, your heart open to receive joy because it is there for you in spades and the underworld where all things pause and begin again. And I really feel like this is kind of like, no wonder both of them came out. It's two sides to a coin. It's like opposite sides, but you can't have one without the other. And you have both of these in your reading. You know, you have your cup overflowing and you have those sleepless nights where you're dealing with your underworld, where you're dealing with the darkness inside. And again, where all things pause and begin again. You know, this is the need to process something before you can move forward. It's that gestation period before you give birth to your, your future. So it's, you know, again, really, really strong two sides to a very, very valuable coin. The coin of your future. Okay. Uh, we're going to get three runes from the All Father. Spirit, please give us three runes for the Scorpio family. Thank you. All right. Here we go. I'm surprised four didn't come out for you. <laughs> All right. So you have Sawilo. This is the sun. This is light, illumination, the light of the world, the source, luck and strength as well, and healing. So this is some really, really good energy for you. And Sawilo with the joy card and the ace of cups. You know, this is a beautiful time of, of you finding light and peace and illumination. Um, Isa, this is a standstill. This is like hanged man energy. Again, very Libran in, you know, Libra's reading. Um, this is kind of um, waiting for um, the chrysalis to break open, waiting for change to come. You've done what you need to do. Now, you know, spirit needs to do its part. And Hagalas, hail, drastic change, disruptive forces. So major change in disruptive forces, but we knew that with the death card, right? So like this is very, very destined. And, and also with the judgment card, right? This is um, preordained. This is whatever it is, just know that you didn't make this happen, right? Spirit is doing this for you. Um, take the good with the bad. Every rose has its thorn. Every thorn has its rose. All of those things. All right. Beautiful Scorpio. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being you. And I'll see you next time. Peace.